In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of working with the first person prefab from Unity and creating a user interface so that whenever you test your game, you'll be able to have an interface that you can show and then quit out of the game. With the codes that we're going to be using here, however, we do need to go in and edit as far as player inputs are concerned. Now, the only thing that I've done to the overall scene at this point is, as you can see, I did remove the main camera, I unpacked the parent element for the first person player, I added a ground element, and also I did go under as far as the nested parent, and I removed the UI elements there, since we're going to be making our own. Now, the next step, though, is to actually come up and under edit, going to the project settings, we're going to have to go to the player. Now under the player here, since I'm working with PC, Mac, and Linux, I'm not worried about the other elements right now. You're going to want to scroll down until you find active input handling. Now whenever you make a new project, it may actually be set to the new package. Because of the scripts that we're going to be getting started with, we're going to change this to both. Now, having said that, when you choose both, you may get a pop-up from Unity pretty much asking, are you sure you want to do this? And it may have to recompile. Tell it yes, and you may have the Unity uh, interface. It may refresh and just reboot as far as the overall game engine is concerned. So now that we've done that, we're now ready to go ahead and add in our UI to our game environment here. So here you can see I have the overall game environment and whenever I press play, right now I don't actually have anything as far as the overall layout here. I can run around, I can jump, but nothing's actually happening. When you're adding a UI into a game environment, we work with what is called a canvas. The canvas is the main container that holds the UI elements. So in the hierarchy, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to UI and as you can see, you have a lot of different options that you can actually add to your user interface. However, even if I were to pick one of these other elements, such as button or toggle or drop down, etc., it would still add the canvas and the event system simultaneously for me. Force of habit, I like to start off with the canvas. And whenever you add in a canvas, notice it also adds an event system. An event system is an empty environment that allows you to attach scripts that can then be called upon whenever you start adding elements to your canvas. Now, let me go ahead and highlight canvas again, and I'm going to come under the inspector. One of the big things that I change whenever I'm working with a canvas is under the canvas scaler. Instead of keeping a constant pixel size, what I like to do is I do like to scale with the screen size, since I'm not sure what type of screen resolution my user might be working with. Now, also too, whenever you start working with a canvas, this is where it can get a little weird, especially if you're working with a 3D environment. Even though I'm in 3D, my canvas is actually 2D. So to actually be able to see the canvas and position the elements on the canvas, on the Scene tab, next to Shaded, there's a 2D button. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and then double click the canvas so I can see it in the view viewport here. The only thing you'll have to remember is whenever you're done working on your canvas, if you wanted to just go back and work on your game, just make sure that you come back up here and click on 2D to go back into 3D mode. But now that I'm in 2D, I can actually see the canvas, I can see the corners and the layout and things like that. So the next thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna right click on canvas and I'm gonna go back into UI and I'm gonna choose to add a button. And there you can see that it actually adds it onto the canvas and I can change the name. I am going to name it more, a little bit more descriptively, and I'm going to call it Quit BTN. Now, buttons actually have two pieces to them. They actually have the display element, which is that base component here. But then if you expand it out further, you also have the text component. And this would be where I'd actually change the text of the button. So for instance here, if I stay on the Quit BTN component, I can come in and using my Move tools, I can actually change as far as the location of the button is concerned. Some other things that you can do with buttons include things like as far as your source images, you can change the color of the button, or you can even add materials to the button. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but one thing I do want to point out to you is from a testing standpoint, one thing that you might want to do is under the button inspector element itself, there is several different colors here that you can set as far as interactivity. 
One thing that I like to do when testing, especially before I add anything like graphics or change the look of the button, is the highlighted color. The highlighted color is going to be a notation to the user that when they roll over the button, it is interactable. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color here a little bit, just so that whenever I interact with the button, I'll be able to see that an interaction is occurring. So the last thing that I might want to do here is under the button drop down menu. Under text, I'm going to change it from button and maybe we say quit game. Notice too that you can change as far as font styles and font sizes and things like that, or the paragraph alignments, a lot of similar things that you have as far as other environments are concerned. But let me go ahead and test my game just so you can see now what it looks like with the canvas in place. So here you can see I have my game environment, but with the new prefabs that Unity has provided us to get started quickly in the games, we now run into a problem whereby if I even if I hit escape and try to interact with the game environment, I can't actually click on the button. So this is where the C sharp scripts come into play. Now before I dive into the C sharp scripts, one thing I want to point out is the scripts that I am working with here are actually going to be needed to used needed to be used whenever you are actually going to build your game. You can't actually test these in the viewport of the game itself. You will have to actually go through the build process. So if you are thinking about having some type of quit UI system, I would test that first before you get too in depth as far as building out your environment. Remember, the more assets and the more elements you have in a game, the longer your build is going to take. So first thing that I'm gonna do though, is I am gonna go ahead and add some codes and scripts on here. And one nice thing is that the scripts, I already have them from the third person example that I did. I can actually reuse the menu manager and the show hide scripts. However, to just go over it, under the menu here, so talking briefly here just about as far as the menu manager, I'm dealing with a single Boolean value that I'm checking to see if the game is paused. So on the update, as far as once per frame, I'm listening to see if the escape key is hit by the user. And if it is, I'm going to run the pause game which is actually going to set the time scale to zero, which means that the game is going to pause. Now this works fine by itself. However, the problem is, is yes, everything freezes in the game. And I also lose control still of the cursor. So that's what these next two lines are. I'm setting the visibility of the cursor to true, and I'm also turning off the lock mode for the cursor. If the game is not being paused, then I change its visibility back to false and then to the time scale. And then from here, I'll be able to call the exit game method, which will allow me then to come in and quit the game as far as the application. This is a nice element instead of forcing your user to hit Alt F4 every time that they want to quit out of your game. Now coming back into the Unity environment here from the code, this is where that event system element comes into play. Again, the event system, it doesn't really do anything on its own. What it's meant to do is it's meant to hold scripts that will be accessed via the canvas or via the different elements that are on the canvas. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag the menu manager onto the event system. And then I'm going to come back to the quit BTN button. And if I scroll down in the inspector here, you can see an on click area. The on click is very powerful because of the fact that this is where we can now start tying in different types of scripts based on what type of game object they're assigned to. Right now, my button doesn't do anything. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus symbol. And at runtime, right now it's not set to any object, which again is why I took that menu management and tied it to the event system. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and drop the event system there. Notice now, no function is no longer grayed out. And instead what I can do is I can click and now you can see the menu manager scripts and I can come in and exit game. So now I have to go ahead and actually build out my game. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into build settings and I'm gonna to choose to build and run. Now, it's gonna ask me, where do I wanna build? 
And maybe this time what I'll do is I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call this build first person just to keep it separate from the third person. So I'm going to go ahead and select this folder and then Unity is going to think for a moment. Again, this is something that you probably want to get set in place prior to building out your game environments, especially if you're using things like terrains or having a lot of elements. So once again here, I can still interact, I can still run around, jump, etc. But when I hit the escape key, you see how now my cursor becomes active. I'm not actually interacting with the game, but I can hit escape again and game back those controls. And now if I hit quick game, you see how it snaps me out of the game. Now that I've done a build, I can hit control B as in boy, and I can go now and do quick builds since I've already set the folder. However, as you saw in the game, we still had one issue there that I wasn't really happy with. While my user is playing the game, I don't want to actually have the quick game button constantly present for the user. Even if I put it in the corner or in the upper corner, I don't want them accidentally hitting it. So the next step is to actually have it so that when the escape key is hit, it also will show the canvas as well. I have a second uh, code snippet that can help with that, which is the show hide canvas. So if I go ahead and bring this up for a second, a couple of things to point out here is I only have one variable here, and it is a canvas variable where I named it menu system. Now, I could have technically just called it canvas, but this naming schema for the menu system that's actually tying over to target the object here. So I will actually have to change this to menu system. But from there, I am going to be able to set the menu system canvas variable as a canvas. And then what I'm doing as far as the enabled is I'm switching over as far as whether or not it is present. By default, it is going to be false so that it's not actually present. And then from there, I can go ahead and when it's hit, it's gonna switch it over to true. So let's go ahead and give this a go. So the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is under canvas, under inspector, I'm going to change this name to menu system. That way now again, it'll sync up as far as finding the object within the user interface and it'll be able to target it. And then the last thing I'm going to have to do is because this is the object being targeted to show and hide, I'm going to click and drag and drop the show hide script onto menu system. And as a reminder, you can actually click on your object. And if you go over into the inspector and scroll down, you can see that I clicked and placed it on the correct element here as far as adding the component. So now I'm ready to go ahead and do another build of my game. Now, as you can see, I'm dropped into the world also notice that I can still run around, I can jump, etc. But notice that that quit button is no longer there. However, now if I hit the escape key, you can see that it appears and I'm able to quit out of my game. So that's a nice little element that you can add onto either first person or third person to free the mouse and to be able to show a UI. And instead of forcing your player to hit Alt F4, you can actually have it set up so that they'll be able to go in and just hit a quick game button instead.